Hi, this is Mr. Miller, and I've got a lesson here for you on bank accounts and interest. So we are looking at bank accounts and interest in this lesson, and there are a number of definitions that it's really important to understand in order for you to be able to get what's going on here. So uh, if you haven't already done so, um, uh, I had asked my students to get some definitions for some key words, and you're going to notice that each of those words to be defined is in bold. And I'm just going to read through them really quickly, maybe add a comment or two here or there. Um, and uh, hopefully, once you have a little bit more understanding of these basic words, that we can go on to talking about the rest of the content for this lesson. So. Uh, first of all, it, you need to know what an account is. So an account is an agreement that's between a financial institution, such as a bank, and an individual, where the, finance, the financial institution will, they will hold money for you so you can deposit money into an account. They will also lend you money at times. So sometimes it's you're taking money from the bank for your own purposes, of course, to be repaid at some point. And they will also keep a record of the money. So this is what an account is. And people will have a number of accounts at times with banks for different purposes. And we can get into that as we go. Next thing, we're talking about interest. So interest is a fee that's charged to an individual who borrows money. Okay, so that's one situation. If you're borrowing money, you have to pay the money back and you also have to pay some interest. The other situation is it's payment to an individual as compensation for the use of their money. So that's another possibility is you put your money in the bank, you say, here you go, you can use my money for whatever purposes you want and they will give you some interest as compensation for the use of your money. So what banks will do is they will... Um, they will lend money to people and charge a certain interest, a cer certain amount of interest, and the percentage of uh, the money that you're borrowing per year will be a, a higher percentage, maybe something like 8%. Whereas when you are lending your money to the bank, they will give you, um, as compensation for your money being held in, in their accounts, they'll give you a very low percentage for savings uh, and it'll be something like maybe 1%. And this is part of how banks make money. So the next thing we've got is a transaction. Now, the general way that you can think about transaction is it's about money being moved. So that movement can be you're either moving your money from one account to another. So maybe I've got my money in a savings account. I want to move it into a checking account to pay off a bill. You can also have it move from one person to uh, or organization to another. So sometimes a transaction might be me making uh, an email money transfer to a friend of mine or a family member, or I can also make a payment uh, to an organization. So um, a transaction could be something like um, from an account to a person or organization. So if I'm um, taking money out of an account and um, just taking it for cash purposes, that could be the case. Or I could be making a direct payment from my account to an organization to pay for something. And it could be from a person or organization to an account. So if I make a deposit into my account, that would be um, a transaction. Or if an organization like Langley School District pays me to my account, then that is also considered a transaction. Okay, so but basically transaction is the movement of money. When you have a service charge, this is a fee that's charged for doing something for you, such as, so a bank will sometimes uh, charge you a service charge for taking care of your money, for holding your money, keeping it safe, and keeping records of how much money you have and um, what account it's in. 
Sometimes you'll have a service charge for processing a specific kind of transaction. So moving money from one location to another. So if I want to do an email money transfer, for instance, to process that transaction costs me something like $1.50. So now some of these things you might be looking at the definitions and thinking that they're kind of self-explanatory or you might already be familiar with it because you might be doing some banking but I just want to make sure we're all on the same pages all on the same page with these definitions and that way we can go forward. A deposit is when you put money into an account and so that is um, it could be considered um, a credit to your account um, and a withdrawal is when you take money out of an account. And so when you take money out of an account, it's sometimes also called a debit. An ATM stands for Automated Teller Machine. And the ATMs um, are machines, and they're also sometimes called terminals. When you go to the machine, you put in a bank card and you enter in your PIN, which is short for personal identification number. It's basically a numerical password, and this gives you access to your accounts. Once you have access to your accounts, you can do a number of different transactions at the ATM. You can make a cash or check deposit. Now, I should mention that with cash, generally speaking, they don't want a lot of coins. In fact, most ATMs at the moment don't accept coins at all. So it's only paper money cash that they can take. But you, you can also deposit checks. And you may have noticed that ATMs have changed over time. And um, actually now it's to the point where the machines can read the money that you're putting in and they can tell exactly what you've inserted. They can also do um, scanning of checks and they know exactly how much it's for. So they've really become a lot more intelligent over time. You can also withdraw cash at ATMs. You can transfer money between your accounts and you can pay bills. Now a lot of these things you can either do in person when you have a, a bank teller in front of you, a person who is uh, working for the bank that will process those transactions. And some people choose to do them online as well. But an ATM machine is um, definitely an easy way to do it if you are, and you'll notice that they're in a number of different locations, including at the bank, but sometimes they'll be in some convenience stores as well. A bank statement is a list of all the transactions over a specific amount of time, and it's usually a month. So at the end of the month, you can get a bank statement. Now, it used to be they would send these out in the mail, but most um, financial institutions, banks, would prefer that you get your bank statements electronically so they would email it to you. Or they'll just keep it on their servers and you can log into your accounts uh, with online banking and get your statements that way. So they won't even send it directly to you. You have to go and get it if you want it. So I mentioned a little bit about credit and debit. So a credit on a bank statement is when the money is added to your account. So this can be either a deposit, a transfer, or pay from your employer into your account. That's a credit. So And a credit can be th thought of as kind of like a plus, adding to your account. A debit, and again this is on a bank statement, I know that some people look at debit and they think, oh, debit card or they're thinking about specifically the transaction when you buy something at a store. So debit on a bank statement is the general um, definition for that is when money is removed from your account. So credit is where it's adding to your account and debit is where it's taking away from your funds in your account. And this can be in a number of different ways. You can either make a cash withdrawal as considered a debit. You can transfer money out of your account into a different account. Um, this could be a service charge or it could be a bill payment and it could be an in-store purchase as well. Financial institutions will generally offer two kinds of accounts, a savings account and a checking account. And sometimes they blend the two in terms of the services they offer, but typically they're only these two types. So let's talk about what a checking account is. A checking account is, as the name suggests, 
Um, it's used to write checks. So people use it to pay bills. They use it to make debit card purchases when they go to the store. Sometimes they'll do pre-authorized payments from those accounts. Um, often people's mortgages are paid from those accounts. So as I mentioned before, they pay bills. Uh, you do ATM deposits and withdrawals using a checking account. With this type of account, you can usually do lots of transactions, so that's the good thing, at very little to no cost, so that's also a good thing. But I guess the one downside to it is that when you put your money into an account like this, it will not grow. So it's not like a savings account, which we're going to look at next, where you get interest for the money that you put into that account. Um, in this case, uh, it's just a holding place for your funds so that you can make purchases and so on. All right, so let's take a look at the last type, which is the savings account, which I briefly started to talk about there. The main purpose of the savings account is for saving your money. And you will earn interest on the money, and typically it's a small percentage per year. But uh, it's better than nothing. It's better than checking account that way. So you do earn interest that way. Um, but the downside is there are very few to no free transactions allowed. Generally speaking, you would be charged for each transaction that you would make from that type of account. So you really want to make sure that you use it for the right purpose. All right, so let's take a look at an example involving a statement and we're going to do some analysis of a statement see if we can understand what's going on here so here's the situation we've got a student who's just got their first job um, he opened a bank account um, he is charged five dollars per month to maintain the account so that would be a service charge we're told that the first 10 transactions each month are free and then he's charged a dollar 25 for each transaction after that now, if you do transactions at another bank, it's going to cost $1.50. And his pay is deposited into his account bi-weekly, which just means it's every other week. And typically, companies would pay their employees on like a Friday. At the end of Friday, um, every other week is pretty typical. So here's what his first bank statement looks like. The first question is, what is the opening balance? So the opening balance is where we start, okay? And so that is $10. The closing balance is what we have at the end of the statement. So I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom here and take a look, there it is. It's $4.70. The next thing we have the total of all the credits. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just highlight what the credits are so that I know what I'm adding up. So the credits are listed in this column. And so we've got $10, 146.73, and one cent. <laughs> So I'm going to take those amounts and I'm going to add them together right now. All right, so here's my calculator. So I'm going to add 10 plus 146.73 plus 171.06 plus 1 cent. And that's it. So the total of all the credits is $327.80. If I want to look at the total of all the debits, then I'm just gonna highlight that in a different color. So the debits, I'm going to highlight in blue, they're in this column, so we've got $20, $250, $1.50, $11.95, $7.85, $20, $250, $7.85, $11.95, $20, and $8.75. So let's add those up. 
So I've got 20, and I'm adding 250, and I'm adding $1.50, and then 1195. And I'm also adding on 785. And I'm also adding on another $20. And I'm adding 250 and 150. And I'm adding another $20 again. And then another $40. 6720. 11.95. And eighty seven forty and twenty dollars. Oops, twenty dollars and eight seventy five. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a total here of three hundred and twenty three dollars and ten cents. The next question is. What is the greater, the total of all the credits or the total of all the debits? The total of all the credits is greater. It says, how can you tell just by comparing the opening and closing balances? So I'm actually going to make a little bit of an adjustment here. Um, it, although it doesn't indicate it on the, um, on the sheet here. Normally at the beginning, so August 2nd, there would be an opening balance. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an adjustment here. And normally the opening balance when you first open an account is $0. Okay, so I would actually change my answer here and say the opening balance is zero dollars. Um, and um, as opposed to ten dollars because uh, initially it was zero. It's only ten dollars now because there was uh, ten dollars added in on August 2nd. So typically when you look at a bank statement, they will actually have as the first line what your opening balance is. So I would uh, tend to call that the opening balance is zero. And then the closing balance being $4.70, um, the fact that you have more money at the end of the month than you had at the start of the month, at the start of the month you had nothing in an account, and at the end of the month you have $4.70 in an account, you can tell that they're are more credits than there are debits and that's why you have an overall positive number here so hopefully that makes sense and so I'm just gonna jot that idea down here I can tell because um, I can tell that credits is greater because uh, the closing balance is more than the opening balance and again that is the um, adjusted one that I've used here so the opening balance I'm referring to the opening balance here really should have been zero dollars not ten okay so the next question is how many transactions were done in the first month so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch colors here to red and I'm going to count the total number of transactions. Okay. So uh, this is a transaction cash deposit. This is another one. That's two. Uh, that's three. This is not a transaction. That's just a fee or a charge. Uh, fees, charges, these are not considered transactions. So going to the cinema and paying for that, that's a transaction. Um, buying something at the sub shop, absolutely. ATM withdrawal, yep. Uh, nope, that is, these are just fees, so those are not transactions. Um, so right here, that's a transaction. The direct deposit, that's a transaction. 
the withdrawal, the buying something at the jeans store, paying for something at the movies, uh, the phone bill payment, absolutely, yes, that's, uh, this is not a transaction, um, and the account fee, that's not a transaction. So let's count up the things that we've got here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've got a total of 13 transactions. So the number of transactions that are free is um, 10. So 10 transactions are free. Three transactions would cost a dollar twenty five each. Okay, so that's that part. Um, now there were some um, additional fees in here, so I just want you to uh, notice that when you go to an ATM and do a withdrawal, <clears throat> there's a $2.50 charge uh, ATM charge and banking at a machine that's not your own is <coughs> excuse me an extra dollar fifty okay so um, again um, doing a withdrawal uh, there's an ATM fee of two dollars and fifty cents and bank machine fee for a bank that's not your own is a dollar fifty so um, it wasn't clear from uh, the statement itself <coughs> excuse me but um, when you have that additional $1.50 charge, the reason is because the banking was done at a bank machine that's not your own bank. So, um, that is that. The next thing it says, explain the account fee that's charged on August 31st. So there's an $8.75 fee, so where is that coming from? So the reason for that is because at the end of the month, the account fee is $5, which covers the 10 transactions, but then there were three additional ones at $1.25 each. And so the three times 125, that's $3.75 which is in addition to the $5 fee for the month. And so the total is $8.75. So um, the next question is, why is it important to read the statement each month? So obviously, um, you want to make sure that um, all charges are correct. Um, so, so to check that all deposits are accounted for, and then go missing, and uh, that there are no extra charges on your account that you shouldn't be charged for. And I guess the other thing that uh, you'd want to be careful of is that if anybody were able to get access to your bank information, if they made a withdrawal from your account, you would want to be able to identify that quickly and let the bank know that you've uh, your security for your account has been compromised somehow either you've lost your card or somebody has your internet banking information um, and then the last question here is does this student need a bank account at all and you want to explain that 
So, um, so I would say yes, and the reason is, um, so the bank account provides a student a place to have uh, pay deposited. So the bank account is a holding place for his money. Okay. Um, it also allows him to uh, make payments on things without having to carry cash. So cash is a little less secure. You drop your cash and somebody can pick it up and use it somewhere else. Um, so it's good to have um, an account that is password protected. You've got a pin on your bank card, um, which gives you some security there. And so you're able to make purchases with that card. Um, but if you happen to drop your card and somebody picks it up, they wouldn't be able to do anything with it unless they knew your pin. So obviously that's another thing that's really important that you make sure you protect your PIN. But the question is, does the student really even need a bank account? And I would say based on all the transactions that are done in a month, it's definitely convenient for this person to have a place where they can um, have their pay deposited, right? So you can hold your funds in there and then you've got a place that you can go to and you can take cash out when you need it. You can make purchases when you need it without having to carry around cash with you. So it's definitely a useful thing in that way. All right, so now we're on to the next thing, which is simple interest. Now, simple interest is calculated and paid at the end of the investment or loan period. And it's based on a percentage of what's called the principal, which is the amount of money that's invested or borrowed. Uh, and it's done per year. So the formula for calculating simple interest goes like this. It's I equals PRT. So I is the simple interest in dollars. And this is how much money that you would make for your investing your uh, hard-earned cash. Or interest could be also the amount that's charged to you as a fee for borrowing money. So P is called the principal. And it's in dollars, so this is the amount of money that you invest, or it's the amount of money that you borrow, the total amount. So the R stands for the interest rate. So rate starts with R. And we usually see it as a percentage. We generally convert it to a fraction or a decimal to do this calculation. <clears throat> and T is the time... Uh, the money is invested or loaned in years. So here's an example. It says you invest $300 and there are two ways to invest. Method A is you lend it to your parents for one year at an interest rate of 6% per year. And method B is you invest it at a bank that pays simple interest of 5% per year for three years. Calculate the interest you'll get for each option. Okay, so option A, going with the parents. So if you are looking at calculating interest, you do P times R times T. P is the principal, that is $300, okay? So this is the amount you have invested, this is P. You multiply by the interest rate, R. So the interest rate for part A is 6% per year, this is R is 0 0.06, or you could put it as 6 over 100. I like using the decimal, so I'm just going to use 0 0.06. And the time, T, is one year. So this is the time, T, for the first option. It's just times one. And if I do this calculation, 
then here is what I will get. So I'll go 300 times 0 0.06, and it's times 1. Of course, that doesn't change anything. So it's $18 of interest that you would get from your parents. Okay, so option B. Option B, if you're doing I equals P times R times T, the principal is still the same thing. It's still $300. the interest rate is different at the bank. So the bank is only going to give you 5%. So this is R for option B is 0 0.05. So we're multiplying by 0 0.05. And with putting it in the bank, we are doing it for three years. So this is the time T is for three years now. So let's calculate that 300 times 0 0.05 times 3. And so this would give you $45 of interest. So now we want to know what are the advantages of each option. Okay, so option A. Okay, so the advantage is um, you get a higher interest rate with your parents. That's the main advantage. Some people may feel more secure giving their money to their parents as opposed to their bank. If they don't trust the bank, for instance, they might trust their parents more. But in terms of, uh, you know, from a financial standpoint, it's, it is definitely more money per year investing with the parents. But then again, you're only investing for one year. Okay, so maybe your parents were only willing to do this for you for one year. Um, whereas with the bank, so the advantage with the bank is that um, the bank has a longer term, three years. And so because you've got such a long time that you're investing this money, you'll get more uh, as a result from that. So uh, short term, if it's just one year, then you could go with your parents. But uh, if your parents are not willing to um, hold your money for longer than a year and give you interest for it, then you would want to go with the bank. So there you go. Um, so if you take a look at the next page, you'll notice that we've got bank account and interest questions, and I have picked certain questions that I would like for you to do. So I would do only the ones that I've circled, or I'll also highlight them. So number one, number three, number five, mostly it's just odd questions. Number seven, number 10, so when I'm asking you to do this, I'm asking you to do both parts here. I don't know if there were any parts. That, yeah, so again, number one, I would ask you to do all parts of number one. And number three, do all parts of number three. And number five, do all parts of number five. And so number seven, do that. Number 10, parts A and B. And number 11, do parts A, B, C, and D. And do number 14 and number 16 parts A, B, C, D, and E. That's all of your assignment. Now, if you take a look at the next page, you've got the answers. So I'm not going to expose that right now. Try to do each question individually on your own first and then check your answers afterwards. If you make a mistake, make sure that you fix it. And if you're not sure how to fix it, then definitely ask for help. So thanks for watching this lesson on banking and interest. I hope you understood it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Have yourselves a great day. Bye.